so in this video I'm going to take a look at a correspondence game that I played uh, three years ago and well it's a pretty short game it's a king's gambit and my opponent went uh, for the main line so after knight f3 g5 which is probably the most testing um, variation and here I decided to play bishop c4 instead of uh, pawn to d4 and my opponent went for g4 now here I play 95 but after analyzing the game by myself without a computer I began thinking about a bishop takes f7 check so I looked at this line and after king takes 95 check uh, king d8 and uh, queen takes g4 and I just think that even though the computer says that black is better in my experience which I have played the king's gambit a lot uh, not so much anymore. I think that white has a pretty decent position because, well, you have two pieces developed and black's king is stuck in the center of the board. It cannot castle anymore since it's already moved and there's no development. All of the pieces are in the back rank. So, from my practical uh, point of view, I think that this is really good for white. But I decided to go for this line, knight e5, which according to modern theory, it's not supposed to be very good for white, but it's not so easy to uh, play with black, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. So my opponent played this move, queen h4 check, king f1, this is all theory still. And now my opponent uh, played this move, which is a blunder, d5. Uh, much better move, I think it's knight h6, um, defending the f7 pawn. And apparently this is the Salvio Gambit. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But my opponent played this, which in some variations of the King's Gambit, you do want to play this uh, pawn push, giving back the pawn in order not to um, get attacked on f7. But that's usually when the queen is not on h4, but rather back on the d8 square. So after this move, I just recapture with a bishop. Usually when you play d5 you recapture with a pawn because there's already a knight on f6 and you don't want to uh, lose the bishop. So, But here there, that's not really an issue. So after bishop takes, my opponent played this move which is not very good at all, f3. Trying to get very aggressive with just the two pawns and the queen. It's um, just not sufficient. So I took with check, and my opponent played king e7. And now I just played d4, which is a thematic idea in the king's gambit. You give up the f pawn so that you can get the two pawns in the center of the board, and the pawn is not only defending the knight, which is defending the bishop, but it's also opening up the dark square bishop along this diagonal. And here my opponent played another bad move, um, taking, probably again developing a piece, maybe knight d7 is what I thought would be kind of annoying because it's, I know the engine doesn't like it, but the idea is you want to trade the knight, which means you have to retreat the bishop, let's say bishop b3, and now if takes, takes, you have the double isolated pawns with white, and now you don't really have an attack. Um, which is not really what you want 
when you're playing the King's Gambit. As a King's Gambit player, you do want to just uh, checkmate your opponent. So after this recaptured, I saw um, that he was going to check on h3, and I thought, well, okay, after king g1, there's really no attack anymore. White is just uh, fine in this position. And again, something like knight h6 or knight c6, knight d7 is probably better than what he did which is g3 I mean there's really no threat in this position and here well I just developed my bishop with check and well doesn't matter what black does black is already losing in uh, the game uh, my opponent played knight f6 if you play the only other move uh, king d6 you're getting pretty much made it by force. I looked at this move c4 and well I calculated b6 and now it's just made in 5. c5 check takes takes you can't take the knight because you get made it in one move and if you take the pawn you go queen d5 check and after king b6, you have knight c4 check, and after this, check, check, and mate. And if you go king b4, there's like a million uh, and one ways to checkmate. You have bishop d2, you have a3, you have I mean, take your pick, a3, a4, knight c3 is what I calculated, but you have knight d3 check, a4, and I mean, b3 is checkmate, knight c3 is mate, and here, bishop d2, and 25 is mate, e3 is mate, uh, queen b3 is mate, so after knight f6, uh, I capture the knight and here, I don't remember if my opponent uh, lost some time or if he resigned, but I think he resigned because this is just losing by force. If king takes, queen f3 check, and you're just losing. Now, if you play king g7 or king g5, I think the easiest way is just to trade queens. And here, okay, you're only slightly, well, slightly better. The material is pretty much equal, I mean 4 pawns against um, 6, but the development is better for uh, white, so this should be a pretty simple win, and well if you go king e7 that was a more challenging move, but after just taking the pawn, I mean what does it the queen has no squares. So you're just gonna lose a queen, basically. And yeah, I mean, that's why I like the King's Gambit because if your opponent doesn't know what they're doing, then it's a pretty short game. So yeah, this might be something you might wanna try and play with white. Uh, especially in Blitz. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.